Hey everybody. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry for the delay. <clears throat> and for staring aimlessly into the TV. Or whatever this thing is. Computer. I once again cannot get my Facebook to come up. I was trained so hard to be prepared <laughs> today. Already ahead of the game. And I set all my cameras up and turned them all on. And then I was trying to find something I couldn't find. And uh, all my cameras timed out while I was doing that. So that I had to start everything all over again. So, oh, it's just the joys of technology and me figuring it out as I go. So now I'm just gonna ramble for two more seconds while I try to get the comments to come up. Because it's just giving me that little loose spooling thing. So it'll come eventually, right? I just have to be patient. Oh, there we go. On that forgot to mute. So the the whole, I guess the whole thing started today on my uh, <laughs> being late was me rushing. Oh, my computer is just not interacting well. Sorry, I'm purposely not talking to try not to get the echo, but um, there we go. My computer would not respond to what I was doing. There we go. Um, the whole, yeah, the whole thing started probably setting me off on being behind was the eight inches of snow we got overnight that slowed everything down this morning. All right. Getting going now. So, here we go. <laughs> I have so much fun stuff to show you. Um, but it will hopefully help you if you're trying to get, come up with some last minute ideas and stuff. Um, that I was I was trying to show you it all, but I did get I did get um, a little carried away trying to find these boxes. Now you can see little hints of everything on the table, um, <clears throat> but I have some more of these little. Th I call them three by three boxes, but they're actually three and an eighth by three and an eighth. Um, and you can put all sorts of things in them. One of the things you can put in them is the three by three cards, which is why I call them the three by three boxes that come with these cute little envelopes. Um, so you can put the little cards in. But the idea today is to show you a bunch of these cool little things. Now, because I was running a little bit behind today, I thought uh, rather than trying to make a half arse job of it, I would, I'll just post all the measurements and stuff Hello, Nicole. Yes, they do look familiar, don't they? I got a couple of things that are different in here, but some of these things that I'm going to show you, we made this weekend at our at our uh, Trailblazer team meeting. So that's the Stampin' Demo group that I belong to, and it's an awesome group. And we do so. I went. It's so much fun. And even though the party was virtual, we still had the chance to chat and do little like Zoom breakout rooms, and and we made these five awesome projects. So I'm going to show you the awesome projects plus a couple extras. I think I have. Um, and just give you like some little pointers as we go. And then as soon as we're done before my hockey meeting tonight, because it's one of those kind of weeks, um, I will make the measurements legible. I could give them to you now, but as I always do, if I have a piece of paper on my desk, um, it, it inevitably ends up getting stamped on because I used to put down the piece of paper. Oh, hello, Coral. I used to put down the piece of paper, like the, the placemat, which I do if you ever come to class, it's always there's a placemat out. <clears throat> and I used to always put one of those down, but now I tend to just work off my silicone mat. So when I go to stamp off or clean off my stamps, like what, you know, stamp them a couple of times before I clean them, I tend to use whatever white piece of paper is on my desk. So yes, notes, anything, they end up being stamped on. So here's, here's one of the projects that we made though. And uh, I think it's so adorable. There's lots and lots of coffee stuff that you can get. But this one actually says, if I get it to focus, here's my cup of tea. Diehard tea drinker. My mom raised us with tea drinkers. Um, actually, most of my family, oh, maybe half my family drinks coffee. Um, my son, my nephews, they all started on tea. My nephews have moved on to coffee, but given the look on my son's face the first time he tried coffee, I have a feeling he's going to stay a tea drinker. Um, so yeah, you can put little treats in there. This is uh, this is just a loose. This ribbon is just loosely tied around here, so you don't even have to untie it to take it off. And then you can open it up and make your fabulous treats in there. Mine is currently empty. Now, what I want, wanted to show you was you could also make just like a band around the outside instead of putting the paper on the inside. If you wanted to put something like jelly beans or something, and you didn't want the jelly beans to, 
to mess up the paper. And in that case, you're just gonna make a belly band. Now, I've got a couple other things where there's belly bands and we're gonna talk about belly bands. So I'm gonna show you on one other project what I mean by belly band and basically how you're making it. But just know that this piece of paper, which I will give you the measurements for inside and then I'll give you outside measurements as well. Um, you can make it inside or outside. But yeah, this way you don't have to destroy the box to get it open. You could have tied it sideways as well, like tied it this way, and then the top would have opened and then you wouldn't have even have to take it off. But there's one idea, little acetate box that you can put chocolates, candies, tea, coffee, in those ones. One of the other projects we made this weekend, and I put it in here so you could see that it is mailable. Because this is a standard card size envelope. And it is, you can get it in an envelope, you just can't get it up. It is a desk calendar. So this is this lovely Eden paper that we have. Uh, this paper, by the way, and there's some cotton paper that goes with it and some pretty jewels that go with it are only available to the end of the year. So if you really like all this greenery and these like rich colors, uh, you gotta get this paper before the end of the year. So here's how the thing works though. There's a bit of a delay here, it's throwing me off. Um, so this is a, a standard size card base, and then we've just made a little foot for it so that it stands on your desk, which it doesn't look as good from straight above as it does when you're on your desk like this. Now we have little calendars, and each one we're just tearing off as we go. So you have a nice little desk calendar. And you know what, I have phone reminders and I could not live without my little uh, reminders on my phone that beep and remind me where I'm going and when, and, I have them set for you know five days out, three days out, one day out, one hour out, depending on the event. And um, I still love to look at a wall calendar or a desk calendar. No matter how electronic things get, I still love paper calendars. So this is basically, it, it's like I said, we're gonna make a, a piece here that we're gonna score and we're just gonna glue it in between a standard card base. And I will just give you the dimensions for like what pieces you need to cut and the backings for these little calendars. Um, Stampin' Up! also came out in this last catalog with a stamp set that will, will let you punch these little calendars out. And I keep meaning to order it, and every time I make another order, I forget because it's I'm usually focused on the project at hand. The end of the year comes, I think of calendars for the next year, and then I think, darn it, I forgot. But it's a very cool set because it, it moves. Like, you'll be able to use it year after year because the stamp set just sort of, you just kind of shift it for what start day you need based and what days of the week you need. Uh, one of the reasons I want to do it is because I'm pretty sure I can use that stamp set and make my week start on a Monday, not a Sunday, which is my preference on the calendar and very hard to find. But anyways, these can be anything, um, any kind of pattern background. You could have this, you know, sports paper, animal paper, cutesy paper for kids. You could put some teacher type decorations and best of all, you can mail them. So calendars. I was going to make all of these things, but I thought if I made all of them, it would take forever. So I'm just going to kind of show you. And really on that one, there's no special tips other than, you know, score where it says to score. Uh, this one we also made this weekend. And this thing is genius. Um, and I'm going to show you this one just because you probably already have some of the other ones. You might not have calendars at home or you might not have the right box at home. But chances are you have envelopes and paper at home. And that's really all you need to make this treat holder. Now, first off, it's adorable. Nice little size here. It's adorable. And sorry, I was knocking things on the floor over here. And so all it is done is I've got this little piece of twine, which is easy enough to tie back. That's that's the um the one thing I notice about treat holders. Sometimes if you give somebody this awesome treat holder and it's tied with a beautiful bow, and bows are a skill, and then the people don't want to open it, or if they do open it, it will never look the same again because you've undone the bow. So this is a nice one because. This is just tie a basic. If you can tie your shoe, you can tie this closed again. And, and this little bow is not so critical to the cool look of this thing. I also will warn you, they're on the desk here somewhere. <laughs> My desk is a total, the crafter math, as it is called. Um, but somewhere on my desk, oh, they're there, right there. This is one of my favorite embellishments Stampin' Up! ever had. <laughs> like in the 10 years I've been doing it, these are probably one of my absolute favorites. I think I have five or six packages of them. And the last time I looked, and I always forget, I go live and then I'm like, darn, I forgot to double check. Uh, oh yeah, totally, Nicole. I'm gonna make so many of these. And wait till you see what I fit in that thing. Um, I think these resin hearts are still on the clearance rack. They were, they are so adorable. I absolutely love them. 
And as it turns out, this new stamp set I have, they're the perfect size. This one here, try to not move it so it focuses. Uh, the one in the middle is an actual one of the resin hearts and it fits perfectly into there. And then I've got another couple little ones in the corner. I absolutely love them. So here we go. The suspense is killing you, isn't it? Um, so when you open this up and we have a nice little brew up some fun. In hindsight, I should have put something on this side of the card. I know, see the little hearts? Oh my God, I love the little hearts. Um, I should have put something on here. I love this patterned paper, but somehow it just seemed like, oh, maybe I should have, either that or I could have put this sentiment over here and just put some stamping. But anyways, we open the flap and we have a huge piece of chocolate. <laughs> now, the reason I, I say you put all sorts of things in there, I wanted to see if how like bulky it would be, because this is a good sized piece of chocolate. This is one of the Merci chocolates. Um, you could also put, easily put a gift card in there. Um, you could probably put some tea bags in there. Let me just uh, sneak a tea bag out of my other, where the tea bag is. Oh yeah, tea bags. <laughs> you could put tea bags and a gift card. Um, you probably could put, hmm, maybe not. I was gonna say you probably could put, if you got a, like a single flat cookie, you could probably put like a tea bag and a cookie in there. But yeah, this very large piece of, of uh, chocolate fit in there quite nicely. And then, yeah, if, so once you once you do make it, and then yeah, just tie close with this little thing. So I am going to show you really quickly, kind of the components of this, just so you see what it is, because you might be thinking, oh my goodness, too many things, too many pieces of paper. Nope, it's not. <laughs> this is the standard envelope for mailing your cards, and this is what we're going to do. We're going to fold it in half. And I realize now I did not totally leave everything out because I have the wrong color. So we're going to fold it in half. I like to use my little bolt folder and crease it. And then we're going to take our scissors. I realize now I got a wonky envelope that has a, a, a I don't think I can show, show on camera. It's got like a big ugly wrinkle on that side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you that this could be left-handed or right-handed. Um, <laughs> We're just going to cut down the where we just scored. And in the other card, I taped on this one. But in this case, I'm going to tape on this one. And all I did on mine, and I did not do it well, and it still worked just fine. Let's try the right side. Is I just used my my snips. And I guess if you if you had no intentions of sealing it or if you wanted to, you could cut this flap a lot shorter. But I just kind of freehanded, because that's how I roll. And I just sort of down around, round it a little bit. Oh, that one actually turned out pretty good. Um, so I just made it so that this flap, so this is the one I'm gonna close because this is the wonky flap. And I just made it so that, I get something here, so that it's a little more even. And like I said, you can tell I cut it by hand, but it, it looks more even than this, which is how the flap looks if you don't do any kind of trimming. It just looks like a straight edge that you cut in half. So here we go, we're, we're almost done where the base of the card is finished, now you just have to embellish. So in this case, we're going to take these, and like I said, I will give you the dimensions for this. I will also tell you, I have completely lost my, my seal on my desk. <laughs> okay, what did I do with it? Oh, there we go. I just replaced the, uh, sometimes I live on the edge and I don't put any mat down, and I just go straight up on my nice wooden desk. Um, the advice I will give you is when you're cutting your paper, and if you're making a ton of projects, you might not have the luxury of doing this, but when I cut this piece of paper, and I will show you a card I made last night, and I made the same mistake last night, and yet I made it again this morning. Um, you see how I, I think this looks kind of off kilter because this side ends on a very white edge, and this side ends on a very green edge. And all I really had to do was split the difference or like shave a little bit off and do it, and I did the exact same thing last night. And last night I ended up, this is a card I made, I use the same paper because I absolutely love this paper. I had done the same thing. I had one side that was green. And in the end, I ended up trimming them so that both sides ended up white. So if you look at this, which I realize now has stuff on top of it, but if you look at that one where it's white on the edges versus this one where, where it's got one white edge and one green edge, I just think it looks better when it's all white. So. Sometimes it maybe it's worth it to trim off your paper a little, but I'm going with this because I had already cut it and didn't have time to cut more. So we're going to make two of these. 
they're the same size. Um, I guess you could probably go with straight DFP, but I think in this case the cardstock will give you a little bit of um, a little bit of stiffness in it, and so it, it won't be such a floppy. <laughs> this could totally go off the rails. I got to pick some better words. Um, it, it will give it a little more structure to your. There we go. That's a much better word. It'll give a little more structure to your card holder, so when you go to tie it, you don't end up, you know, squishing the whole thing. So this is all we're going to do. We're going to leave this side folded down. I didn't even, I didn't even glue this piece of envelope down. We're just going to center this in the middle on this side. And we are going to, now on the other one, I was going to try this um, beforehand and I didn't, but now that I got the one camel, there we go. On the other one, the two pieces of cardboard were on the same side. On this one, they're on different sides. And I wanted to see what that did for how you could close it. So we're about to find out once I figure out what I did with my top one. So I'm not going to do the whole thing. Oh, see, and I made a mistake. What you were supposed to do, because I didn't have my ribbon sitting out in front of me. You know the um, your piercing tool? Did you know that one of its uh, most useful things, if you catch it quickly, is to run along on, underneath things you glued down that you didn't mean to? That's right. Lifting embellishment, poking holes, and fixing mistakes. It is a multi-purpose tool. Okay, let's try that again. Now, <laughs> funny enough, I have done this before where I have pulled it up because I screwed it up, put the new embell or the new adhesive back on it, and put it right down again without fixing my mistake. Let's try not to do that this time. What I forgot to do, and part of the back of my head. I've got myself a piece of ribbon. I'm going to wing it on how long that ribbon is. This ribbon is some of the nicest ribbon ever. This red satin ribbon. Oh my goodness. I'm not really a ribbon person. I'm more of a twine person. But this ribbon is so smooth and ties. It. Oh, it's just gorgeous ribbon. Okay, I may have made mine a little long. <laughs> Oops. So what you want to do, and that was supposed to be my tip, and I totally screwed it up, is once you get this down, just kind of wrap your ribbon around and then put your, your front piece over. Because that will hold your ribbon in place. There we go. Freshly embellished. That will hold your ribbon in place. So when you open it, it doesn't fall off. Now you can choose to put it, put like a little adhesive, oops, I'm off camera again. A little adhesive on the back or not. But as long as it's underneath the front piece, you're good. So, like I said, on this one, the card stocks on this side and this side, which that left this envelope open. But this time I did it this way. So for sure, you're gonna have no problem putting in your putting in your uh, gift card. I guess it's still good for your tea bag. But my question is, if you put, we're experimenting as we go, because why not? If you put something bulkier in here, now that the card stocks on two different pieces, because on the other one, this the back piece was totally flexible. Well, there you go, it works just fine. So it really doesn't matter how you do it then. And then a little piece of twine, which we have. See, this is this is how you know I'm a twine person. I had to I had to like reach behind me into my, into my shelf to get the ribbon, but the twine I have four different colors of twine sitting on the corner of my desk. So and I'm not decorating this one just because I showed you the other one, but. That's as easy as that. We put this on, we tie our little bow around, and Bob's your uncle. If I tied that better, that would have worked better. And then in this case, I will actually trim this off. But yeah, how easy is that? The envelope folded in half, two panels with some DSP, put a little bit of decoration in it, and you can put all sorts of things in your envelope. And when they're decorated, they're adorable. So yeah, this was this was like the probably the highlight of the of all the stuff we had done. Some of them I had made before, but I had never seen this before, and I was just like, that is genius. Limited supplies that you need to make that. Here, let's move some of our stuff out of the way. Uh, one of the other things we made, right? I'm recycling all my treats from everything, <laughs> so I just keep taking them out of different things. Um, are these? Now, a couple things for you here. You can use various different um, envelopes to, or bags to do this. 
in this case, this is uh, some really cool vellum that we have, the shimmery vellum that was in there. And when I wrapped it around, again, this is another just belly band. When I wrapped it around this, this uh, folded up bag, it was too close in color. So I put it through the embossing folder and look at how cool it turned out. It has all these little white bubbles now instead of being pink. And it, so now the fact that it's very close in color to the background doesn't really matter. So what we have here, and I'll show you in a minute how to make this, is two pockets. So I can put a little gift card in here. I, I can put treats in here. In this case, if I had two pieces of chocolate, I only have one left, I give the rest of my son's teacher, but um, you can put a package of hot chocolate. You could put a package of hot cider. Um, you can put the bigger stuff in there. You could put the gift card in there if you're worried about it coming out. Um, and then put maybe like the chocolate in the front. Uh, so it just gives you a couple different spots to put treats in. You can also, and I, I had one on my desk and I'm not really sure what I did with it. You can also put note cards in here. Uh, regular cards will fit as long as you put them in this way. This, <laughs> this card totally does not go with this bag, but you get the idea. If you wanted to, you could put a card in it would just be peeking out of the top and then maybe put you know, a little gift card. So these have so many options of what you can put in them. And they are basically a bag and I'll show you here in a second here. Yeah? We have, I don't know if you have leftovers like I do because I always super stock up. We have these uh, craft bags that were printed. We have some of these gorgeous uh, white ones with the gold on them. The one I was using for that are these ombre bags, which are so pretty. And they come in the five in colors. So evening evergreen, soft succulent, pale papaya, something freesia, I think I want to say fresh freesia, and polished pink. So these, this is the, the current ones that are in there and they are very pretty. And you can turn them into most occasions just by how you embellish them. Um, so because you've seen one with this thing, I'm just going to show you with one of our other bags what it looks like. And all you're basically going to do is you're going to go up, and this, this, is, this is my secret for, for how to make this fold nice and straight. So I'm going to take my little ruler, and we're going to fold up at, at two and a half. So when I go two and a half, it's right here. So this is all I'm doing. I'm taking my ruler at two and a half, and I'm just going to fold against the ruler. Line up my sides. But if I fold against the ruler, I get a nice even edge. Then I take my ruler out, unless the ruler happens to be the gift, which in most cases that is not going to be, and give it another press down. There we go. <laughs> Once again, I maybe should have put some thought into what I was grabbing because these two, in my opinion, do not really go together. But here, let me try. Let me try something a little less abrasive on the eyes. We'll do this. We'll do that same trick again. So those who need to see it again, we're going to go two and a half, which takes me here. So I'm going to put my ruler at two and a half. And I'm just going to fold my bag on it. And I get a nice straight line at the bottom. Ta -da! Ruler tricks. Now you'll notice this bag because, because we want the nice top up here, right? So, so what we're folding up is the bottom of the bag. But when we put on um, our belly bands, it's going to cover that up. And if, if for some reason, if you cut this too thin, you'd probably end up seeing, like you really don't want to see the, whatever that says, 2011 whisker graphics made in the USA, probably not part of your design. Um, you could just seal your belly band a little higher up to cover it, or just make sure your belly band's wide enough to cover the parts you don't want to see. Because if you flip it the other way, so you get the nicer front, then you end up losing the top of your bag here. So this is what I mean when I say belly band. It's a strip of paper. In this case, we folded this up by two inches. So this strip is two and a half. And as you can see, that sort of, what I do with my white piece of paper, sneak peek at the next box. Um, as you can see, that gives you about a quarter inch on either side, just to make it uh, so the box or the bag still pops out, right? So this is the trick of the belly band. In this case, where my original one go, we're going to put a nice big label on the front. So in order to make it as pretty as possible on all sides, this is where we're going to start, right where the label is going to go. 
And we're just going to loosely wrap it around and, and press it with your fingers. Right? You don't need to seal this super tight. And you don't want to pre-score this because if your bag's off by a little bit, uh, then it's not going to work very well. So in this case, we're just going to pre-score it and pinch with our fingers. And we've wrapped it around. And we want this tight enough to stay on, but loose enough. In this case, we're not going to slide it off by design. It stays on this way. But if you do the same thing by wrapping it around any of the other boxes or anything like that, and then you want it loose enough that you can actually slide it off. In some cases, I mean, the intent would not necessarily be to slide this off the present. But a lot of the people I have, have gifted things to or have seen other people gifting to, they like to save parts of things and they like the decorations. So if somebody wanted to save this birthday thing, it was a special birthday, this slides right off. Even if they don't keep the bag, this slides right off. It also works to reuse it on a different project. But that's the intent is the belly band can slide on and off. So things will open up. So there we go. Put that one back on. And let me see. <laughs> Piles of stuff everywhere. So once you've got your belly band around, and I made this one a little longer. I, I knew it needed to be two inches, but I did not write on my notes from this weekend. Um, I did not write how long it needed to be. So as you can see, going this long, this is probably two inches longer than it needs to be. So for me, if I'm using a belly band, I'm for sure using tear and tape to keep it nice and strong so that as people do slide or if they if they need to, you know, manhandle a little bit to get it back on, there is a, there's a nice strong adhesive. So normally I would make this, let's back out of the way for now. Normally I would make this so that it at least overlaps by about this much, just so I can have a full strip of tear and tape underneath it. That's all you need to do. So this. When I measure this out, this is likely going to be um, 10 or 10 and a quarter inches long is what you need for this piece. Like I said, it doesn't need to be quite as long. And it just wraps around. And it said, you could, this, this could be um, this cool vellum. It could be a piece of cardstock that you've embossed. It could be a piece of cardstock that you stamped on. It could be a piece of DSP, the designer paper. It can be all sorts of things. And then you have all sorts of options for what to put in your, your treat holder. And it's really nice to just hand this to somebody um, as, as a nice little like sort of gift and card all in one. There's one more treat. Uh, the last one we made this weekend, I said I was going to show you that box next. I'm not. There was one more thing. And I lost my tea bag again. There we go. Is this card. Now again, this card slash gift also fits in a standard envelope. <laughs> you have better motor, motor skills than me. I also just have got the hiccup started, so that'll be fun. So this is just a standard card base. There's a trick to it though, with um, a nice layer on top. And this is such a cute set. And I love that it has little, like I said, little tea bags because uh, not everybody makes coffee. Now the, tr the treat though is on the inside. Ta-da! Oops, I took the card over there for the other one. <laughs> That would have been so much more impressive if you could have told there was a card in there. There's your gift card holder. So there's lots of room to write on this still. And we have a nice little gift card holder in here. Or we have a tea bag holder in here. Or <laughs> this one's a little thicker, but it works. Or we have a chocolate holder in here. Actually, I'm pretty sure you could. If you want to see, to me, part of having a present, and if I give somebody a gift card, I tend to always have something with it. Because even if you can't use the gift card right away, you can always keep the chocolate. And I'm getting a piece of paper. There we go. So yeah, you could put a gift card in the back and just put a chocolate. Now, this is a rather large chocolate. What did I do with my envelope? Uh, so it's still going to fit in this. It's still going to fit in this envelope. Like I said, that's a good size chocolate in there. The ones you get at um, Costco that are much thinner, you could stick a few of those in. You probably could get like four of them in there. Uh, they'd be a lot thinner and easier to do. So I can still get it in the envelope, but I can tell by looking at this. Okay, I can go the right way. There we go. That. <laughs> 
I'm, I am seriously directionally challenged. There we go. Um, that this is not going to be standard postage. If you try to mail it with a chocolate this thick in it, it's not going to fit through that little slot. But if you're handing it to somebody, that doesn't matter. So there we go. This one is the surprise on the inside is the treat holder. Now, because I might need those for, <laughs> for my next display, I'm going to show you what this is. You can, you can use a piece of DSP and you can use a piece of cardstock and you can cut it all and fold the edges over and what embossing folder did I use on the pink one? Oh, sorry, Nicole. I um, I used the retired one. I love this one. I'm never going to get rid of this one. Um, it was I, it, it was a couple of years ago and it was just these random polka dots, but depending on how you use it, it so in this case, it looks like confetti, right? Because this is a birthday thing. But if you put it on a winter card, it looks like big, like big fluffy snow, or you can put it in it. Sometimes it looks like snowballs and it's an awesome folder. Um, I forgot the name of it. Polka dot. Yes, of course it is retired, but it was perfect for what I wanted to do. Okay, so for this card, the inside is actually an envelope as well. We're making this easy on you. These little three by three envelopes that we sell to, for making the little mini cards. So just recently, I had one on my desk. So you a little three by three card, as long as you don't have too, too many layers on it, will easily fit in here. If you wanna layer the cards up, because just because they're small doesn't mean they can't be fancy. If you wanna layer them up a bit, then you're better off to make them like two and seven eighths just to give you a bit more room. These cards are pretty sure these are three and an eighth by three and an eighth. If I have any idea, there we go. I'll be able to use this as my measuring. Yes, they are, they're three and an eighth. So the, if you make little mini cards, you can fit the mini cards in this box. You just can't fit the envelopes in this box. But what we're gonna do with this envelope is I'm gonna cut the flap off. And you know what? Yeah, you probably don't need to. If you wanted to, I guess you could seal the flap down and cut it out. You know what I'm going to do? See, part of my problem when I was trying to stick that piece of chocolate in, so I just had a thought there as I was doing that. So I cut the flap off the first time, but I kept hitting the back of the, I don't know if I can make that. The sun has decided to shine right through my window on what I'm doing. No, I can't quite make it focus. The back of the envelope is right there and it's a straight edge. And that's what I kept hitting things on. So I'm actually going to say, in this case, so we're gonna actually put it right back on. I'm gonna cut it off just because it's gonna be easier that way. And then because I'm being all COVID proper and everything, I'm gonna use some seal to seal this down rather than fit. <laughs> and I'm just gonna glue this back on because I think in the end, I might have just solved my problem of things running into stuff. Okay, so here's the thing, whether you cut it off or not. <laughs> That's right. If you're going to do that, watch where you put the glue because I just glued the envelope shut by doing it that way. Okay. <laughs> Only put glue on the bottom part, not the top part. Let's try that one more time. You just really want the glue where the glue goes. That's right. That's an opportunity for an embellishment at some later time. I'm just not sure what it is yet. All right. So let's do that properly this time. I'm going to actually put it just a little bit lower too. So I, there we go. Okay, so now we have it so it opens. <laughs> Don't glue it shut like I did. So we have this to open. So now we can stamp on the front. Um, when I did it with by cutting the, the, the top off, I had like it said the edge was right there. So now I'm not going to have that little edge that I kept hitting. So I think this will work at the end. Uh, the trick is there we go. <laughs> the trick is finding the punch. <laughs> Okay, so we have a bunch of different punches. In this case, I thought I would just use the oval because all you're doing, all you want to do is you want to punch enough of the top of this envelope out that you can grab whatever's in it. If you were to put little chocolates in it, it also looks a little bit nicer, a little more finished. If you put those little chocolates from Costco in it, you could, like I said, I'm pretty sure you could fit four, but the bottom ones would be completely in the envelope and the top ones would be up here. And having that little bit of a, a notch would just make it that much easier to get out. So what I did, I said either cut the flap off and just turf it or cut the flap off and do this, which like we're gonna try. And then you just need to take your punch and center it. And the trick to centering, I'm trying to make sure, is look how much envelope is on either side of the punch. And once, you're, once you think you have it right, just squeeze just enough to check. So, so I could turn it and I can make it straight. So now I can see that on this side of the punch and on this side of the punch, I have the same amount of envelopes sticking out. 
which means it's centered this way. And then just a matter how deep you want to go. And we'll just punch that out. That's an odd looking notch. I'm going to do a little tripping there. <laughs> this is my problem. Too many things on my desk to show you. Okay. I should have probably pulled that up a little bit, but that's fine. We're just going to do this because I think that notch is weird otherwise. Okay. So I've made, a, I made the envelope with the notch. And then again, I think because you're going to be putting things in and out of this, uh, you want to make sure that you put, you put the envelope on securely so that the first time you take something out of it, it doesn't fall off the envelope. And so in my case, I like to use tear and tape. And I think the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of tear and tape, which I didn't do on the other one. Um, I'm going to put a piece of tear and tape right here because I realize now it's not worth saving the flap of the envelope because as soon as we notched it, Unless you only notched one side and kept it flat on the back, you're going to run into the same problem. Sorry, I just realized that as I was going, and maybe that doesn't make any sense. I'm going to show you what I mean. But first, I need to open this envelope by cutting it with a cutter because I've sealed it shut. <laughs> see, if, see if that's enough. Stand by one. <laughs> Okay. Here's what I just realized <laughs> after we made that, tried to make that all nice and fancy. Don't do what I did. You can just cut this off because as soon as you punch um, the back like I just did, you just you just defeated the purpose. So we're gonna cut it off. Third time's a charm. He said, nothing goes to waste though. Those other pieces of envelope will be used for something. I'll just make them shallower. All right. How would I do with my punch? Let me see if this is going to work. Nope, because I need too big of a punch. So here's my new advice, because I just thought of this as we're going. So this works fine, right? I, I, this one I use the circle punch. The problem is I keep hitting this piece of paper. Now, if I had glued the back of the envelope across the back like on this one, I think it would have, oh, you can't see the, you can't see where the tear tape is, can you? If I put a piece here, I think that would solve the problem of hitting this so much when you try to stick the thing in. So that's what I thought was, okay, well, instead of doing that, if you can swing it, just don't cut it off. So because we need, we just need a little piece. Like we just need a finger hole. The other option is just pick a punch that is small enough that you can actually fit it inside the envelope so you're not cutting the back out. And make your notch that way. Because then you will still have a notch, but the back of your card will be solid. So when you go to put stuff in and it's taped down like that, it's a lot less likely to hit what's in there. I made that more confusing than I had to be, but I was trying things as I was going. Even if you use this, which I, th I thought I had a card base on my desk, and I seem to have lost it. So not to be not to be outdone, we'll just take one that doesn't quite. Um, open the right way for what we want. That's okay. Let's experiment some more while we're at it. Uh, so this, so instead of opening, you know, in the traditional way, I like to cut my cards, my portrait style cards like this, so that they stand up. But I'm pretty sure we can make this work for a, for a gift card holder as well. It, because I use this to pry off that layer, my pokey tool is very sticky. And all my little pieces of the backing are sticking to it. Okay, so I'm going to put this. Hmm, I'm going to put this one here. And I think this is part two of the experiment. Because I, because I put that piece of tape right across here, 
that wasn't there on the other one. I, on the other one, I only taped the three edges. I think that may have just solved our problem of how easy it was to get this thing in and out. I'm not, yeah, see, I'm not hitting the, I'm not hitting the back of the card now. It is a little awkward though, <laughs> just because I'm not used to it, opening the card this way. So you could, you could do it portrait style and it does work uh, to put your card in this way, but because your card is now on this side, you're going to have to decorate up this side. So if you want to, to put a sentiment on here, make sure when you're doing it, you, and this does not match either, <laughs> that you put it facing the right way. So it's going to be upside down when the card is closed, but when you flip the card open, it will, your sentiment will be the right way. And then your little treat will be waiting for them on this side. I think if you put your sentiment or your, or your, not your sentiment, your gift card or your treat on this side, um, it's going to be way too bulky in the front to begin with, but you're also risking that it's going to fall out when you open it. So I think you're better off to put it down here. You can also stamp something on this envelope uh, like we did down here. So that went on much longer than it was supposed to for that particular card. But the trick was three by three envelopes. Boom, solve your problem much easier than taking a piece of cardstock and having to fold it under and tape it and make the little pouch. That was what that was, that was what that quick tip was supposed to be. So there we go. And then our last one I'm gonna show you, we did not make on the weekend, but I have made many of, they are very popular. Um, they're a good size box. So what we have oops, is our mini paper pumpkin box. Um, and I do have a tip to show you because I do it every time. So this is the box and I'm gonna use this other one when I give you the measurements, I will tell you Sorry, I have a piece of paper that keeps going in front of my computer. There we go. Um, I will tell you the right direction for these things because what I did was I put this lovely belly band on, but I didn't want to have just plain box the rest of the way. So I stamped on it. The thing is, it really matters what direction you stamp if your stamp's directional. Like you could, I, I made a box the one time and I stamped words along the edge. So it really matters which way you stamp those. But as you can see, this belly band just slides off. Even on this box, this is the belly band, right? It just slides on and off. So same as the other one, I just wrapped it around. I lightly squished on the corners. And in this case, I made it so the box wasn't completely plain. These boxes have two sides. <clears throat> Excuse me. One side is a matte finish. And one side is shiny. So the shiny side is meant to be food safe. So if I wanted to put some food in here, some cookies, um, jelly beans, I don't know, whatever. Can you, you notice I love jelly beans? I've said jelly beans several times. I love jelly beans. Um, whatever's in here, you want to use the food safe side to put the food in. I like, I just like matte finish better. So matte finish is always out. If you are not putting food in here, you can easily fold this box the other way and have the outside shiny. If you want to stamp on the box, however, you need to stamp on the matte side. Uh, you could, you could try to stamp on this side. You could maybe use stays on, which we have black and brown stays on but it's going to be very easy to smudge and it's going to take a long time to dry. So I would advise against it. If you just want a, I like the box to be a shiny white, no problem. So the other thing you'll notice is I was trying to stamp so that when, when you took the belly band off, we had stamps all around. And so I stamped all four sides of the box. And then I realized, because when I first stamped it, I didn't stamp this flap, but the flap is actually on the outside. <laughs> so when you go to stamp, you actually need to stamp the flap, the top, and three of the sides is what you're going to see. Now, stamping this side is no big deal. It's just like an extra little perk when you do it. So those are the things. You can stamp on them, and then you just have this little belly band. And so I, I wrapped it around, and it just takes, there we go, a little get the corners in, and this belly band will just slide right back on. The other thing you can do, if you want to make it easier, is just decorate the sides. Now, the reason we did this, and this is what started the whole thing, and is uh, it's Secret Santa Day tomorrow at my son's school. And in this case, I'm gonna guess Sam is short for Samantha, because that's why there's pink, because it's for a girl. So his class all um, drew names, and each person had to write down kind of what their interests and stuff were. And then they get to make, uh, they have a five to $10 limit. So we're, we're gonna put some candy and a little gift card in here, but. 
um, we needed a nice presentation. Come on, look the house, it's coming from the house of the crafter, it's gotta be a nice presentation. So I made a nice one in this way, he didn't have to write in his horrible handwriting, her name on there. Um, so I used the nice little alphabet dies that we have. So in this case, I made um, cardstock mats and just put the DSP on them. And I put it on all of the sides. Now you can make it all the same color DSP. Uh, you could make it, each side could be a different color. In this case, I liked these two patterns the best. So I made all of the sides one pattern and I made the top this pattern. And now when you open it, it just opens without, you don't have to take, slide anything off or untie anything. So it works out great. So I'm gonna give you the measurements for this as well on the list. So if you wanna put, I like to I like to map my DSP. I like to put a piece of cardstock under it. And, in, and most times I actually just have a little bit peeking out. So if you decide you don't wanna put cardstock on when you look at the measurements, then you just use the cardstock measurements for your pattern paper. Cause you could put just straight pattern paper down. Um, as you can tell by this box, depending what you stamp on it, you could just stamp the box, right? So these boxes are pretty versatile. Um, these boxes are big enough to fit our note cards, which again, I apologize because I did have a note card out when I started. Um, let's see if I have a blank one here. I do. Blank one and an envelope. Okay, so unfortunately this is not stamped like the other one I have that is probably buried on my desk, but we have the packages of note cards that come with the envelopes, pre-cut, pre-folded, super handy. Um, and these ones, you could fit, I don't know, I think it's eight, six or eight, and they fit perfectly inside this box. So if you want to make a gift for somebody, you decorate up the box, and then you stamp up a bunch of these note cards for them, and you give them this, and then for, you know, the next six months or whatever, they have a bunch of note cards they can use. And these note cards can be mailed. Um, our little three by three cards are too small to go through the postal system, but note cards can. Okay, so different ways to decorate. Sorry, I'm trying not to lose everything on my desk as I go. So you can stamp the box, you can belly band the box, or you can cover it with DSP and paper. And if you really wanted, if you wanted to give this to somebody and you wanted to make sure they couldn't open it, then you certainly could tie a piece of ribbon around it to tie it shut. Everything just stopped on this end. To tie it shut and then put like a knot in it so that it would stay sealed. But these ways will usually give you the same effect. Now, the thing that you wanna know with these boxes is, and I can show you on this one, I'm not sure because it's, it seems to be the white does not focus quite as well as the other ones. But if you look at this box, can I get the right angle? No, I cannot. Okay, you're just gonna have to take my word for it. <laughs> um, it's kind of rough on all the corners. There's like little cracks. You can sort of see the little crack there. And it's a little bit rougher on this side here. The same as here. Oh, you can sort of see it there. See, it's kind of a little rough. So I made this box the first time. And as soon as I did it, I knew I had done it wrong. All you have to do with those ones is whichever side you want out. And this, this kind of shiny food safe side does not have the same cracking issue. But if you want the, the mat side to be out, then fold it the other way first. That's all you have to do. So I'm going to fold all of these folds. They're all, they're all scored. I'm going to fold them all back on themselves first. And I think it just breaks up the fibers enough that when you fold it the other way, it doesn't tear. Because if you just straight fold it the way you want, you get the rougher edges. Now the rougher edges are not the end of the world. Um, and I can trim them off a little bit with my scissors, but um, I wish I could get this to focus better. But just by folding it inside out first and then folding it back, none of the edges crack. No, there's no tears, everything is nice and smooth. And these boxes go together very quickly. Fold all the sides back in. Um, these boxes are super easy. They, they come flat like this, but a couple folds, no, no adhesive required. And your box is folded up. So very easy to assemble, very easy to decorate, lots of different options. And these boxes are three and a half by five and a half, I think. 
I have a longer ruler. I'm not sure if this ruler is long enough. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it's almost six inches, and that's almost four. I just picked up. So this box is almost four by six, uh, and it's an inch thick. So you can fit a lot more in there. They could put all sorts of small presents in here. Uh, in this case, it's going to be, like I said, a gift card. And, and because all the kids got to write their favorite candy, a package of sour worms. So you know the little big or the bigger size packages. We'll squish one of those in there and it will fit with a little gift card underneath it. So lots of options for what you can fit in here. And like I said, lots of different ways to decorate the box. So that went way longer than I thought it would. <laughs> sorry, sorry. And thanks for hanging until the end. Um, hopefully you've got some ideas for some gift stuff. Um, I have lots of these supplies. And uh, let me know what you need if you need to order any. Well, I forgot to mention when I was making this box, um, I like to have a little surprise sometimes. So I put this on the side where you don't see it at first. You don't see it till you go to take the belly band off and then you get a little Santa surprise. So you can decorate all the sides of the box, whichever you want. So there we go. Lots of options. Like I said, I will give you this one, of course, fan favorite, coolest thing ever. Um, and I wish I could remember whose idea it was, uh, which demonstrator's idea it was. Do you remember, Nicole? What Samara had said. Um, but yeah, it's just a, it's a fabulous idea. Where's my other ones? Little boxes, little calendars. These calendars, by the way, um, there's places you can get them in Canada. Um, their cheapest place to get them is through the States. You will pay more to ship the calendar than you will to buy a case of calendars if you try to order them that way. So every spring, we end up having somebody coming back from the States. These go on sale in about March. Uh, the company that sells them is right on the front, if you didn't pull it off, Tailored Expressions. So these ones, um, about March, the company comes out with like the calendars for the next year. So to get 2023 calendars in about March, I'm going to look to order these. And depending on who it is we have going back and forth, um, if I put out a call saying, hey, I want calendars, or if you think, hey, I want to make those as my crafting project, Tina Zink did the envelope. Thank you very much, Nicole. Tina Zink is a demonstrator in Nova Scotia. And that, this was her that came up with this project. And it is genius. Um, so yeah, if you're thinking you want these envelopes, or sorry, these calendars, then let me know January, February-ish, or watch for a call to go out to say, hey, I'm ordering calendars. Who wants to get in on it? You get 10 for... Well, depending on the price, could be five or six bucks for a package of 10 of them. Um, and they make great things. And so in the springtime, we order them, we get somebody to bring them back. And then usually in the fall is when we put them together and make stuff for the next year. So gift ideas, gift card holders, treat holders, various things. Look at that, they all fit on the desk. Uh, watch for the measurements in about an hour once I get them all written out so that, like I said, so that you can read them and understand them. And um, I hope you have uh, lots of fun making them because I sure did. I, oh, I, I, I can't get enough of treat holders and just the look on someone's face when you hand them something like this with a little surprise in it. A couple chocolates, something like that goes a long way. So happy, uh, happy crafting. I hope you have a great Tuesday and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks everyone.